everyone for being here tonight. I want to especially thank the candidates for taking some time out of their day uh, to give all us constituents their views and outlooks for the future of Vidalia. Each alderman candidate will be given two minutes for an opening statement. A 30 second notice will be given near the end of their time. Each alderman candidate will then answer a series of questions from the moderator. Each police chief and mayoral candidate will answer a series of questions from the moderator first and then finish with a two minute closing statement. A 30 second notice will be given near the end of time. A few things to note, this is not a debate. There will be no rebuttals. Candidates, respect your opponents, please. If you start to interject your opponent, your microphones will be shut off. Everyone in the audience, let's keep it cordial, respectful, and professional, please. Please refrain from any loud outburst. If a, if a situation does arise and it gets out of hand, you will be asked to leave. We're gonna start with the alderman positions first. Police chief positions will be second, and then we'll wrap it up with the mayoral candidates last. Alderman candidates will be called up by their districts in numerical order, starting with District 1. It is at this time I would like to introduce our moderator, Mr. Fred Middleton. Thank you, uh, Brian, and thank you for going over those uh, house rules. One of the most difficult things I believe to do is to host a political forum and certainly be the moderator of a political forum. So we hope that all goes well tonight. And on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce, I would just like to thank all the candidates that are here tonight and uh, for your uh, efforts to put yourself out to be a candidate uh, in these city elections. We certainly appreciate it and respect you for that. Um, our first candidates tonight will be the Alderman of District 1, and that is Rosa Demby. Is Rosa here with us? Rosa, come on up and have a seat. Also, um, Alderman for District 1, Joseph McCoy, and he's not with us here tonight. So, Rosa, this is going to be uh, your show tonight. <laughs> and uh, what I'd like to do is we'll start with just, you, you can sit down and make yourself comfortable and be at home. We're going to start with just a two-minute uh, time limit to state your platform, uh, and then we'll follow up with a couple of questions. So. Go right ahead and start. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'm Rosa Irving Demby, and I think that just about everybody in Concordia Parish knows me because I have taught in the school system. I've been an educator, a counselor, and a retired principal in Concordia Parish. So I have lived in District 1 for 27 years, and I believe that I got into this race because I believe that there are certain things that must be done for the citizens of District 1. And with that being said, I believe that the leadership qualities that I bring to um, you, my constituents in, in uh, District 1, uh, I believe that there are certain qualities that needs to be ad addressed or exemplified and so with that, I believe that drive is the number one thing. You must have drive and you must believe that you can stay with the task until it's done. Integrity, integrity for me is an awesome thing because honesty and uh, you know, so that you can see what's going on as well as uh, being uh, transparent. Honesty, well. How, how can I say more about honesty? Um, you know, I'm not going to say to the candidates of, of uh, District 1, I mean, not candidates, the citizens of District 1, that I'm going to be able to do this, that, and the third. I am going to say to you that I'm going to work hard for you. I'm going to do all of the things that I feel that I can do. Can do and there are some issues that will be addressed later. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the first question. What are the biggest challenges you see in your district? If elected, how would you try to improve those obstacles? 
Well, for right now, um, we have certain issues that have uh, plagued uh, District 1, and one being um, water drainage. Uh, when, when it rains, as, if it di as it did a few weeks ago, a couple of days, that means that my commode does not flush in my house. I've lived on Hickory Street for 23 years, 27 years, and it has never happened. So it's only happening now, and I think it's a result of needing better pumps that can uh, better drainage, um, better sewage, either bigger pumps or something that is going to happen there. Uh, another thing that I believe that we need to address is the potholes that's in the streets. Um, in addition to that, I believe that we should also look at those houses, um, and I do have a plan for that, but we will reveal that later, but they are houses that are, that are in the neighborhoods that need to be uh, torn down or demolished and whatever. I am about beautifying our neighborhood and our district. I think that those are some of the things that I would be addressing and um, how are we gonna do that? I believe that working cooperatively with the mayor and other board members. My father was a Baptist minister and he used to say all of the time that a lone wolf is a starving wolf. So I actually believe that if we are going to get a job done, you have to work with other people. And so that is what I plan to do, is work with the mayor and other uh, aldermen to get the job done. Thank you. The last question. <laughs> if elected, what are three of your personal goals you would like to accomplish within your role of alderman? Three of my personal goals. One would be better drainage. That is a must and that is high priority on the list. Uh, that's a must. Um, I don't wanna have to go, and I'm a business owner, and I, w I don't wanna have to go every time it rains to the wedding mart to use the bathroom. So that's one of the things, and the mayor and I have talked about that, and we certainly are going to work together to get that resolved. The other thing that, uh, what, what did you ask me? How would I do it, what would I do? What are the three things? Oh, the three things, that's one. The other thing that is high on the priority for me is uh, blighted property. We would like to see um, it either fixed up or torn down and grass well manicured and that sort of thing. And I, I know that it can be done when it's feasible, but when it's raining like it has been, it's almost impossible because my yard looks bad too. But uh, I, I believe that that those are the things that I would like to see, as well as some of the potholes that's in our streets. All right. Well, that concludes the questions, and uh, we certainly appreciate that. And uh, if you would, give uh, Rosa uh, a round of applause. <laughs> Next would be the alderman in District 2. If y'all would come up to the, to the head table, please. We have with us tonight uh, the candidates for Alderman in District 2, Jamie Walsworth, Raymond Murray, and Robert Gardner. <coughs> At this time, I would like to uh, start um, Jamie on your end with uh, two minutes uh, to state your platform. I'm Jamie Walsworth. I've lived in Vidalia all my life. Uh, I've raised my, my family here. I've met a many of friends here. I've graduated from Vidalia. I think we, I really believe that we've got Vidalia going in the right direction. Uh, I'm just here to ask you for your vote for District 2. Okay, if y'all would, would y'all pull those mics up a little closer to you so, so everybody could hear. All right, Raymond Murray. 
Well, I'm Raymond Murray. A lot of you know me. Um, a lot of you know that I really have only have one main thing that compels me to run for Alderman of District 2, and that's y'all. Um, that's all it is to it. I want to work hard for you. Um, coming up through the years, I watched my grandfather work tirelessly, back and forth on trips, trying to get something for you. He worked hard for it. I want to see it stay the course. I, I just am compelled from within to be part of it and to watch it and to try to maintain it, try to make it get where it belongs, it gets back to you. And that's, that's really all I have as far as a platform. Thank you. Robert? Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. All right. So my name, I am Alderman Robert Gardner. First of all, I, I don't want to seem that I'm, I'm redundant from Ms. Rose Demby, but it seems like she identifiably copied all my notes tonight. Because everything that she said is pretty much what I have to say as well. So um, I'm Alderman Robert Gardner once again. I want to humbly ask you for your vote again to reelect me as your Alderman. I have spent the last four years trying to be the best servant for the people of District 2. I have always made myself available to our citizens and employees for whatever their needs were. I will continue to make myself available. I promise to continue to make decisions for the best interests of all people in the town of Vidalia. I will continue to be inspirational in helping citizens find avenues to help with utilities, also make sure that the blighted properties is continued. Rebate checks are given if available as well and retention for the employees. So on April 4th, I ask that you vote Robert Gardner, District 2 Alderman, once again. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Now we've got, uh, again, a couple of questions that uh, we're gonna ask, and Robert, we'll start on your end. Uh, what are the biggest challenges you see in your district if elected, re-elected, how would you try to improve on those obstacles? When it comes to District 2, District 2 faces drainage issues unlike my opponents here. I am, I am actually affected by when the river rises and also by when it rains and it pours. Um, the back of my yard area floods. This year, I got my first experience in 30 plus years of living on Laurel to meet my friendly friend, the alligator. And if most of you all didn't know, you probably seen or watched me on your local news uh, station. So that was one of the biggest issues is the drainage issue. And I have spoke with our mayor currently, um, police juror, state representatives. I have talked to all the local officials and we're working on a massive plan for a pumping station that will not only be affected in district two, but also in district three as well. So if you continue to keep me as your alderman, I'm gonna be fighting to make sure that happened. Because also on this year when the high waters arise, um, one, of the, one of my elderly neighbors was, um, the son had to actually evacuate him out of his home because of the flooding stages of the rain. So that would be the biggest challenge is the drainage for district number two. Thank you. Next would be uh, Raymond Murray. I have to agree, there's a few things wrong or not wrong, but District 2 faces. One is just flat the age of the district. It is probably one of the oldest districts in town. It's not as new as everywhere else. Um, with that becomes problems. Um, you have to maintain when you have an aging district. Uh, the second, second problem, of course, is drainage, the slough. The slough's a big problem. Four years ago, we were gonna start looking at trying to get pumps. We're still looking at trying to get pumps. Um, we've got to continue to push. The pumps will help. The pumps will not only help District 2, but the other districts as well. The third thing I see in District 2 is some of our streets, such as Georgia, Florida, um, Alabama, those streets run 
parallel to the highway and they are not curved. That means they are not cleaned. There's constant debris on those side streets. Every street pretty much in Vidalia is curved but those. So we need to push to get that done and get our streets in better shape. All right, thank you. Next would be uh, Jamie Walsworth. I'll be pushing extremely hard for the pumping stations in District 2, protecting the people and the property from flooding caused by the seepage and the drain problems that we all see. This is a must and that needs to be installed and up and running. We need to stay on top of the problem of all blighted properties in District 2. We need to maintain the responsibility to offer quality services to our residents, while at the same time work to enhance the growth of this community by ensuring the protection of the people and their properties. Need to set up support business opportunities for the advancement of this community by listening to the serious concerns of the people in District 2 and support their ideas for a better place to live. And we need to work toward the town to continue to give the citizens the hydroelectric royalty checks that they have coming to them. Thank you. The final question, if elected, what are your three personal goals you would like to, comp you would like to accomplish as your role of alderman? Raymond, we'll start with you. My three biggest goals to accomplish or try to accomplish, the, the first being protection of hydro royalties. Um, that that's, goes two ways. Part of the royalties are for y'all, you. That's what they were meant for. The other part is also for you to be spent through the city as, you know, to upgrade the city and to spend on, on whatever the city may need. But someone has to watch over it. Someone has to make sure that things don't get out of whack and we don't get money rolling in and turn around and, and vote ourselves big salaries and things like that. Somebody has to stay the course and keep a watchful eye over it. Um, the second thing is, of course, drainage. Drainage is a problem. We have a constant seepage problem now. The river stays high, constantly. It used to come up and go down and things would dry out. Not now. Now it's seepage. Now in front of my house in District 2, in front of everyone's house in District 2 pretty much, is a, it's constant water. It holds. What are we doing about it? We need to fix it. We need to find a way to clean it. The third is street repair. District 2 has some of the worst streets in town, and it's due to its proximity to the river. The seepage has caused problems. We, we've got to actively stay on top of this. Over the last several years, I don't see where much has been done, but we can't do much when the river stays high. So we have got to come up with a plan as soon as we can and as fast as we can, we've got to get on it and get it fixed. Thank you. Jamie? My three personal goals that we would like to accomplish is to bring in a bond between the people of the town so we can thoughtfully and carefully prepare our future together by making the experience and the quality of living in Vidalia by focusing on community events and activities. Work hard to keep the town of Vidalia be more than just a sum of parts, but to build a relationship with neighboring cities. In fact, to make it a fact, not just an idea to build solid relationships so our town can grow in a positive manner. And last but not least, I feel between the town and the community are currently positive, but problems and issues can arise at any time, as we know. Like any relationship, we can grow stronger partnership through continued communications. This practice builds a trust and respect that makes solving problems and addressing conflict between two or more of the spirit of friendliness without serious disagreement. We can learn from listening to our citizens and their concerns. To make a ses successful growth in Vidalia as a whole, this being a solid link to the mayor's office and the town council to get things in motion. Thank you. And last would be Alderman Robert Gardner. As I stated earlier, my number one priority is drainage. I've been told that there are several grant opportunities available for the project instead of using city funds as a main source. So that will be my number one 
um, priority. Um, drainage. Infrastructure, dealing with our roads, sidewalks, curbside, and gutters, or, and to fix them or repair them so it can be equally distributed throughout the whole city of Adelia. Making sure that we all have a uniform community. That would be number two. Number three would be equal opportunity in the workplace. I stand behind that. Making sure that all employees are treated equal and fair in the workplace. Uh, diversity of leadership roles in the working environment as well. So all employees have the opportunity to serve in some type of capacity of a leadership role. And that concludes our questions for the Alderman in District 2. So if you would give them a big hand. Thank you. Thank you and y'all have a good one. Next would be the candidates for Alderman District 3, if you would, if y'all would come up to the head table. We have uh, five candidates uh, in the race for Alderman in District 3. Chris King, Brent Smith, Alderman Sabrina Dore, Alderman John Betts, and Alderman Tommy Probes. So at this time, we will start with uh, Alderman Chris King to give two minutes uh, of opening remarks. Hello, everyone, and welcome. And uh, my name is Chris King. I'm running for Alderman and uh, District 3. And while this is my first uh, shot at politics, I'm not new to community service uh, to include state, federal, and local. Um, served in the Marine Corps for 15 years after high school, active duty, uh, been overseas, been across the world, uh, then came back home, joined the Louisiana National Guard to continue my service. I'm also a reserve officer with the Vidalia Police Department. Uh, it's something that's just in me, something I've done my whole life since, after, since graduating high school. Uh, I've just continued to serve, um, and a, a, a person that I looked up to a lot in my life told me something when I was younger, and that is if you see problems, you can't complain about them unless you're willing to fix them. Um, and one of the things I'm looking to bring to this board is uh, some youth and some different point of views that they probably haven't seen in a long time. Um, and that's why I would appreciate your vote, and I look forward to talking to everybody here. Thank you. Next would be Brent Smith. Hi, I'm Brent Smith. Uh, a lot of you know me. Uh, I'd like to thank all y'all coming out on this beautiful afternoon and the chamber for having us. And I apologize, most of you know me and know my voice don't carry real well, uh, but I'll do my best. Uh, you know, I, I grew up in Vidalia, and Vidalia has always been right here. Uh, we, uh, I met my wife and her girlfriend at the time and moved to Baton Rouge. We was there, I don't know, about two days and I said, I gotta go home. I, I, can't, I can't deal with all this. So, and uh, I've always been around sports, coaching girls, cause that's what I have. And uh, never, I always wanted to, to be an alderman and make a difference and uh, help lead this town toward the future. But uh, I never, felt like I had a, the time to devote to it because, you know, you, you need to devote your time fully to this. And uh, at the time, the girls were my biggest priority. And uh, also another thing that really, I, that just sticks with me and I think about her all the time. If uh, anybody knows my grandmother, Sadie Jones, uh, she was town clerk for 50 years, maybe 51 years. And she retired at 90, <laughs> and only because she couldn't see anymore. And just to watch her love and devotion for her town was amazing watching that grow up. And, and I told my grandmother, I said, Mama, I sure hate to see you quit at such an early age. You're not setting a good example for the rest of us. <laughs> but. Thank you. Next coming up is um, Alderman Sabrina Dore. Hello, I'm Sabrina Dore, and I am seeking re-election as alderman for voting district number three. 
You know, the role of an alderman is actually very important in the town of Adelia. We are the oversight committee for the town. We are tasked with scouring the budgets, the finances, for offering suggestions on different ways to look at things. We oversee the policies and procedures that are put in place for the employees. And you know, we approve ordinances that protect the citizens of the town. Sometimes in doing that, as you can imagine, if someone came into your household and said, you need to do this another way, can, you know, kind of makes people mad a little bit. But that is the role of the Board of Aldermen. We are in place to oversee. We are in place to offer those additional thoughts. Not that we're in there on a day-to-day -day basis. We're from the outside looking in. And what we need on the board and what we have had on the board are five independent thinkers who are all willing to stand up and have their voice be heard. We all want to work together for the same goal, which is to better Vidalia, even if we don't agree on exactly how to get there. But having those differences of opinion, having those differences in methods of doing something, creates a checks and balances, keeps everybody on their toes, makes you look twice. And I think as a result of that over the last four years, we have seen a huge upswing in Vidalia. Vidalia is in a fantastic position. And I believe that that is because of the strong members that are on the board and the persons in the mayor's office and city hall working diligently for a common goal, which is the town of Adelia. I'd like the opportunity to continue that role. Thank you. Thank you. Next up will be Alderman John Betts. I'm John Betts. I, uh, I'm seeking, uh, again, the uh, position in District 3. Uh, I was, um, I've had the privilege of serving District 3 since April of 2001. Um, in that time, um, we've seen good times, we've seen bad times, but um, I think that uh, Vidalia is uh, postured to be um, much better. Um, I believe that Vidalia is a good place to live. It's a good place to raise your family, and it's a good place to retire. And if I didn't believe that, I would not seek that. Most of you know that I am employed by the uh, Concordia Parish School Board. I am a sales tax collector, and I also work in the internal audit uh, division for the school board. And I've been there for 22 two years. I am an active member of First Baptist Church, I serve as a deacon, and I also now currently serve on the personnel committee. I am married to Debbie Whittington Betts, who was one of the, the brightest things that ever happened to me. Um, I've, I've said that besides my salvation, uh, knowing Jesus Christ as my personal savior, that she was the best thing that ever happened to me. I still believe that, and we've been married a while. Uh, nothing has changed that. We have two sons, we have Scott and we have Brian. Uh, we have two daughter-in-laws, Sarah and, and Jennifer. We have four grandkids. We have Seth uh, and Sean, Sydney, and little Addie Grace. Scott and Sarah uh, are not here, but Brian and Jennifer chose to come back to Vidalia. And that's another reason why I want to uh, continue to serve is because uh, they, they chose to come back to Vidalia. So I want Vidalia to be the good place uh, that, that we, we've known. When we raised our boys, I want my grandkids to have that same, 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 same place. So I'm asking for you uh, on, November, on April 4th to uh, return me to office. Thank you. Thank you, John. Next up is Alderman Tommy Probst. I'm Tommy Probst, again, seeking re-election as your alderman. As you know, we've had uh, four good years. It seemed like they flew by. And as a second round, I've learned a lot if I'm re-elected as we've gone through this process. As you know, we've had, uh, as our role, policies, procedures, uh, budget, cooperative endeavors, 
And some of those things we've gone through with uh, some hard feelings, but we came to a resolution on each and every one of those things that we've changed. We think we've changed some policies. And we're going to work on changing some more policies that we have in place here in this town. We've had struggles with budgets. And we're going to continue to have struggles with, bud with budgets if we represent the citizens of a day as we should in taking their funds that, that we're responsible for to make sure they're spent well. Yeah, we'll have difference of opinion, but my firm belief is that we represent the people, we stand for what the people believe, we go out in the community, we got people in our districts that say, I want you this, uh, to vote for this this way. And when you find out that the majority of them des decide that's what the vote needs to be, you stand firm in it. I'm a hard person to convince to change if I feel like it's right. Not that I won't change, but you got to convince me that it's right. So yeah, we've had our struggles in the past four years. We've also had some uh, situations where, like I told you, we worked it out. But that's what it's all about, working it out. And that's what I'm going to be again this time, as if I'm elected on the board again. Stand in there firm, fair, and listen. And part of it's listening and communicating, you know, in both directions with all people on the board and in administration. So my firm, my firm uh, stance is that I'm here for one person. That's you, the people of Adelia. Not just District 2, the people of Adelia. I've been here for a long time, and I've got people in my family that are going to be here for a lot longer. I have a business in this town that I hope continues. But we have to work together to continue to grow this town and have the town that's best for each and every one of us. I appreciate your time in listening to me, and I hope that we, uh, as I go into this race, that you consider me for your candidate. Thank you. Now to the two questions that we have for each of the candidates, and we will start with Brent Smith first. What are the biggest challenges you see in your district, and if elected, how would you improve on those obstacles? Um, I would say the biggest challenges is to uh, we need to increase jobs for sure. Uh, the streets are getting in pretty bad shape. See, I know we can't control the river, but something's got to be done. Somebody we could work with. I don't know. Maybe even get the Corps figure out because. I think this is a new normal, so we're gonna, we're gonna have to figure something out on that. Uh, but in, in being the son, I, I grew up, I was the son of a plant worker and the son of a beautician, so I know what hard work, watching my family work hard, try to figure out how they're gonna pay bills. Uh, can we borrow money from somebody until we could, you know, because the plant's about to close. I, I we just wanna get some good jobs in here. and, and um, Get these for sale signs out of the yard. I, that's I've never seen that many houses for sale, but I, a lot of people moving off. And uh, but I believe with, with a lot of jobs and and um, the administration that we have now, it, it looks like it's going in the right direction. Uh, we, uh, you know, I hear there might be as many as 700 jobs before it's over with the uh, with the denim factory, but. Uh, Really, that's that's what I want to do. I want to keep everybody working, and um, and, and work with the board. Be you know, be more unified with our administration. No matter who's the mayor, uh, we need to work together, and that that's always been my strength. Uh, you know, selling insurance. You know, I'm dealing with some some of the people's most valuable assets, and I most of the time know the answer. I know I know what they need. But I bring in outside sources to say, look, th this is what we got. This is what I'm thinking. What are you thinking? What, what am I missing? So I, I think I'd work well with, with the board and, like I said, whatever administration uh, that, that happens to be there. Thank you. Next will be Chris King. Uh, one of the big things I focus on is um, looking ahead to the future. Um, I'm going to stay away from the flooding issues as we've, we've all kind of discussed that and we're going to keep hearing about that tonight. Um, some of the things that bother me is going to be things like, you know, 
the chief having to tell us about how to work the police department with $750,000 less money. Well, the things that bother me is where did that money go? And finding out why we're not bringing it back to the city and why we're trying to figure out how to maintain the same lifestyle we have with less money to do it with. Um, money is gonna be the key to all of it. We gotta figure out how to get it here, keep it here, and fund the programs that we need to put in place to grow our community. Um, some of those fundings are even grant fundings that we're just not applying for at the moment that are out there um, unapplied for and that's why we don't have that in our community. Um, some of those things I wanna bring uh, to this community such as the Young Explorer program uh, that could be funded through the police department and there's actually state grants and funding that help out with that to get it started. Um, and then, then other grants, um, I've seen some posts online about youth councils and doing something for our, our children of this community. And um, I'm gonna have a vested interest in that because I have a child at the upper and at the middle school. And uh, I'm thinking about when they get in high school, what does Vidalia offer the teenage kids in this community? Um, we don't have any allocated funds for anything to develop anything as it pertains to our youth. Um, so I, I would wanna continue to develop and build upon uh, the park and recreation center we have, which is an amazing facility. Um, I just feel like it's being underutilized and uh, we could do a lot more with it, um, bring those sports and those, those tournaments and those outer line regions to our community. That's what's gonna bring money in, is people spending money here. Thank you. Thank you. Next would be Alderman Tommy Probst. Uh, challenges that I'm faced with as an alderman presently are, are minimal. I mean, we don't have a whole lot of challenges in, in certain senses, but we do have challenges in our ordinances. We have challenges in our budget. We have challenges in a lot of other things, but the ones that I got calls on more than anything else was animal control, grass cutting, blighted property, budget repairs concerning infrastructure. Those kind of things are what I got calls about. And each and every one of them were concerning some kind of policy or procedure that we had in place or part of the budget. Uh, people out walking around, you know, this year we, we lost somebody due to animal control in our town. And uh, it's something that's very serious that we need to take uh, some, maybe some changes. And that's one of the things I'm working on now and talking about is changing a uh, ordinance with grass cutting, animal, animal control that needs to be changed because you can you can do whatever you want to but until you put a, a fine that will make those people cut their grass or control their animal nothing's going to happen so they, that needs to be changed things need to be added that's something that's a challenge to me budget is another thing each and every one of us knows that there are certain categories which you're happy with and there are certain categories you're not happy with and I think every year, no matter what it takes, we have to put budget and spend money on our infrastructure every year. And uh, like I said, that's, that's another challenge that we have to do. And the blighted property, you got blighted property in every district, but we have not done much to solve that problem. People don't appreciate a house sitting by and that's burnt down and sit there for five years or a house has fallen down that their kids can go in, the rats and the snakes are up in there. So that's something we need to really work on in this next administration, whoever it is, and for the people of Adelia, whoever, whichever alderman is in there. That's, that's a challenge I have. Thank you. Next will be Alderman John Betts. I think the challenge that we have in District 3 is not unlike the rest of them. Uh, we do have infrastructure problems that we need to address. Uh, I think that um, there are certain things that you can do uh, when you can do them. Uh, we, we all run into that. Um, I think that uh, we have uh, got a budget that um, is uh, workable. Uh, you can always spend money, and there will always be somebody that wants to spend money. And I'm, I'm not saying that we should not spend money, but I think we have to be good stewards of the money that we get. We know that uh, 
the economies rise and fall and revenues to cities rise and fall. So we have to watch that and we have to manage that. And I think that, that, that we, ha we have done that um, well in the, in the last um, four years. Personally, as far as um, finances, um, I, I believe that the city is, is a bit better than it's been in 10 years. We have some flexibility that we, can, we didn't have before and that's because of good management. Can we improve that? Sure, you can always improve. But I think the, the biggest challenge for us, um, is one of the things is pride. Um, personal pride. I, I think people need to, to take a look inside and, and help us because our city will only be as good as the citizens are. And, you know, uh, part of that is, is personal uh, pride that we have. Some of these areas could, could improve if people just took a little more pride themselves. I, I, I love Vidalia. Uh, and so uh, I just want it to continue. I think we've done a good job managing it. And I think that uh, whoever it is will have that task of being good money managers. Thank you. Next would be Alderman Sabrina Dore. I believe that districts are for voting purposes only. The question is, what challenges does District 3 face? Well, when we look at a budget, we don't look at District 3's budget. Mm -mm. What we need to do, I think, is sit down as a collective group prioritize the problems that are there across the board. The problems are pretty much the same all the way across. However, there are districts that have been neglected, absolutely without question. And so what the board needs to do along with the administration is unify together, find out what the problems are, find out what the residents believe the problems are because the problems for the residents may be vastly different than what we see on a daily basis. We need to prioritize those in what needs to be done immediately and set forth an, a plan of action, something that the people can see. It is published somewhere, perhaps along with the budget annually. This is what we intend to do. We also need to look at not only immediate repairs for what has been allowed to deteriorate, but a scheduled plan of maintenance so that it doesn't get to this point anymore. That is not a district by district thing. That is the town of Vidalia. When we talk about the town of Vidalia, it's district one, two, and three. You have five people serving the entire town. The districts are for voting purposes only. We've got to come together, look together, say this street is the worst, this is second worst, this is third worst. This area commodes don't flush. They're having to go somewhere else to use the restroom. I don't have that problem. There's a small little pothole in front of my house. That is a very little priority if someone in another district cannot flush their toilet. So the problems in District 3 are not the problems of District 3. They're problems of the town of Adelia. We need to unify, get a plan in place, and get them all fixed together. Thank you. All right, the final question. If elected, what are your three personal goals that you'd like to accomplish as your role of alderman? And um, Alderman Dore, we'll start with you and go back that way. All right. My three goals are, are really simple. Um, you know, we have done a lot of work, the administration has done a lot of work in courting industry. Much needed jobs, they're here, they're coming. The jobs are, you know, like we said, we've heard, we're, we're gonna get some fantastic jobs. We need to jump in with both feet to make sure that whoever is hired for those positions cannot afford to live anywhere but Vidalia, and Vidalia would be their only choice. We've got to fix the streets, we've got to repair everything that's wrong, we've got to enforce ordinances, we've got to clean up the town, we've got to lower the cost of living while raising the standard of living, we've got to revitalize Vidalia. And one thing that I think has been forgotten in Vidalia is our number one employer is the small business. Perhaps I'm biased there, 
because I have one. My dad started it and I carried the torch. So I understand how important it is to have a small business. And when you talk about the number one employer in the town, it's not a massive industry. It's every one of those stores as you drive up and down Carter Street, the gas stations, the restaurants, the, the mom and pop shops, countless jobs are there. If we could offer incentives like we do for the industry, for the small business owner, perhaps they can afford to hire more people. Perhaps they could lower the cost of whatever they're selling so that people will shop locally more. I think that, that is something we have to jump on with both feet. We have got to start supporting the small business owners in this town with as much passion and vigor as we do the industry. We've got a fantastic team that is working on making sure more industry and more jobs come into town. We need to focus on the small guys who have chosen to be here and who have remained here. Next will be Chris King. Uh, one of my main focuses would be better communication and I think that's across the board. Um, I've been saying it since I've lived here. Uh, we have a Facebook page, we have social media, and even things like this don't get published. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people that live in the town don't know about them, except through word of mouth, because the people like me and you are publishing them on our Facebook page to let everybody else know that this is taking place. Um, also, communication from the aldermen. Um, getting out in the city and actually walking the streets more than once every four years and talking to your people and knowing what they want not just showing up to the meeting that we know they're all going to be at to complain about something because we've all already seen the messages across social media about what's coming to City Hall. Um, we need to head those things off, take them on the chin, uh, find an answer and a solution, and drive forward before it gets to that point. I think that's something we kind of be proactive and not reactive um, is what, we, what I used to say in the military. Um, find solutions before the problem becomes too big to handle and then it's just a complaint that we just, we say that's just how it is because that's the way it's always been, which is my least favorite um, phrase I hear uh, quite often when people don't want to fix a problem. Um, that's admitting it's a problem and doing nothing about it. Um, secondly would be bringing in a youth program to this community, um, something for the kids to do, whether, you know, whether that's sponsoring a kid to come work with the mayor, work with the aldermen, um, whether that's putting together an entire youth council, I think you, you proposed that, uh, Ms. Dore. Um, I think it's a great idea. I think we need to do it and not talk about it and start implementing some of these things into our children and into our schools because that's who's going to be sitting up here after, after these guys are done is those kids in our school right now and, and they're not being part of the solution. Um, as we can see, there's not many teenagers to young men and women sitting in the crowd. Uh, we have to get them involved in our community. Thank you. Next would be Alderman Tommy Probst. Uh, one of my goals is, I, we don't de deal with personnel, but I've seen in this town is upper mobility issues with our employees. Uh, I would continue to strive to push for the upper mobility of these people in our town that work for us. If you have not got the opportunity for upper mobility, then what's the use in striving? You know, that's mine. And I was always pushed that in my job with the Postal Service was push upper mobility to have the employees feel like they're worth something and have the ability to move forward to a higher level. Another one is to work for our employees. Another deal is to attrition employees. You can talk to the employees in this town and they'll tell you, a lot of them will tell you, we have too many employees. No matter what everybody thinks, uh, not everybody, but some people think we, we do. I feel like we do if the employees are telling you that. And I've harped on this since I started four years ago. Attrition of employees to lower our budget on expenses. Each employee costs this town a lot of money. And everywhere around our country, people are doing more with less in the corporate world and all the world. And we can accomplish it, but again, it takes management. It takes people to manage those people and make sure the work's done. Uh, the other one is that I'd like to, again, insist on infrastructure repair each, each and every year. That's a goal that, that I feel like we need to continue to do. And work on uh, several ordinances, as I said earlier, work on ordinances to change them uh, concerning time frames, fines, enforcement, and uh, we saw that in a special meeting, I think, last night. 
things need to be changed in certain ways. So uh, I guess that's the goal that I have. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Probst. Next will be uh, Alderman John Betts. Uh, my priorities for um, the next four years is to uh, remain dedicated to the citizens of Adair. Uh Everyone. Um, I have said in the past that District 3 is the one that puts me in office, but I serve the whole town. And so my dedication for uh, service, uh, I want it to be as strong as it was. It's, it's not died. Secondly, I, I want to stay devoted to the progress and the success of this town. We've got some good things in place. We got some, with, with the help of the economic development uh, that's done, we, we have made progress. We are beginning to um, see some, some uh, fruits of some labors that started a long time ago. And sometimes the hardest thing that we have to do is wait. But we are now seeing those, those things come. And I'm dedicated to keep those things coming. In fact, try to attract uh, even more. And then uh, finally, my goal is for uh, this board, whoever it is, to always display professional actions and a spirit of cooperation. The worst thing that we do as a board is to tell this community that we can't get along because we're here to serve the public. And so one of my goals is, is to make sure that this board in the, in the next four years always professionally acts and displays the spirit of cooperation. Thank you. Last will be Brent Smith. Yeah, he, he kind of hit on a couple things that, that are definitely my goals. Um, and I was just sitting out here looking across the room. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, well, one of my goals is definitely give the department head, not just department heads, but the employees. See what they need, what, you know, what's going on out there. They see it every day. They know more about it than I do, or probably any of us up here do. But, uh, but as I was looking across the room, I see so many people that have made me successful. And, and I want to give back to all these people. Uh, one of the first things I do when somebody comes to my office or if they buy insurance or don't buy insurance, they leave my cell phone number. They can call me any time of the day. Ain't that right? <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, just work, work with the people and, and the town employees. See, see what we need. Uh, make, make the, like I said, just work in unity. Just get together, figure out the problems, talk to each other. Uh, don't don't be scared to like if somebody's got a better idea than you. I mean, just get together as a team. And like I said, that's that's one of my strongest points because I'm I'm used to doing that. I always involve people with my decisions. Uh, but uh, another goal that I was thinking about is uh, you know protecting the integrity or the financial integrity of the city. Uh, you know, we, we got a great city. Like I said, I, I fought and begged to move back here and uh, wanted to raise my kids here. Uh, but, and, and, you know, improve the infrastructure and, and get jobs here. We, we need jobs, we need good jobs, we need benefits, we need jobs with benefits. Uh, so, oh. I thought she was taking a picture of me while I go, but you telling me to chill. Okay. <laughs> My bad. That's it. Thank y'all. So let's, uh, that concludes the Alderman of District 3, so let's give them a big hand and, and say thanks. I'll be doing it. <laughs> Next up will be the police chief candidates for the city of Adelia. If you would, start making your way up to the head table. Uh, 
Uh, there's uh, three from uh, three from District Three, one from District uh, Two, and one from District One. All right, guys. Here we go. Next up, the uh, candidates for police chief uh, in the city of Adelia. Frank Dusan, who couldn't be with us tonight, I believe. Arthur Lewis, Chris Strickland, and Chief Joey Merrill. We will uh, start with uh, the first question. And the first question will go to uh, Arthur Lewis. The question is, what do you consider to be the major crime problem in Vidalia, and how do you plan to combat that? Okay, I was kind of thrown off guard. I thought we were going to say our platform first. But in speaking to the public, our major concern, and now this is only opinionated in, with the people that this is involved. In speaking with the public, our major concern, um, car burglaries, patrolling the neighborhoods, and patrolling the highways. I plan to combat this concern by being visible and having an aggressive patrol in the neighborhood and on the highways. When I was, when I was chief, no one could sit on their porch and not see a patrol unit at least one hour as they sat there in a 24-hour period. Okay, the community, I think about community policing and was and will again um, be a major priority in your police department. Study shows that the strict police enforcement, uh, enforcing the speed limit and redu reducing the traffic um, uh, crashes. In short, Vidalia will use the patrol division which will make Vidalia a safer place to be. You see, when I was chief, and I am chief also right now over in Faraday, Louisiana, but when I was chief in Vidalia, I emphasized to my officers to get out there and community police. Get out there, talk to the people, be recognizable. These people can help you on any situation in any situation that they can. You know, I believe in talking to the police officers. The, a police chief and a manager is basically like a parent. Arthur, we're running out of time there. Two minutes. If time's okay. up. Um, item stolen in schools are just a small problem, and we have school resource officers there to combat these problems. Uh, implementation of programs that educate the public is something that I'm, I want to do. Uh, it's something that I'm truly passionate about. And if we can learn how to prevent things before they happen, it's all due to the greater good. So one of the programs I want to implement is a residential uh, awareness check where if, you, if a citizen comes to us and asks us to assess their property, we will come assess the property. We'll look at it and we'll tell you what you can do to better safeguard your stuff. And property crime stems from, a lot of property crime stems from narcotics abuse, whether it be alcohol or, or uh, illegal narcotics. You always have to look at the bigger picture. During my time on the narcotics task force and a direct result of substance abuse, when we executed search warrants, we recovered stolen property. And specialized units is one of the things that I'm going to focus on, too. The items are either traded or the dealers themselves stole the items from the, the individual citizens. The program I want, and, but that being stated, I also have to tell you, as citizens, something that you can do right now to help prevent property crime is write down your serial numbers to everything you own and put it in a safe place. Chris, that's, that's time. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Next will be Chief Joey Merrill. Uh, drugs is going to be the most uh, 
crime that we have, not only in Vidalia, but in the United States, as always. But, and it also leads to other crimes, such as theft and property theft. Um, and the question is not really what I'm gonna do, it's what I'm already doing. Uh, first off, I hired a full-time narcotics officer during my administration that we didn't have. I also worked hand in hand with other agencies, Sheriff's Office, uh, Adams County, Natchez PD, Faraday, Clayton, and, um, and we worked together as a team combating this problem. And uh, you, you know, are we ever gonna cease it? No, but all we can do is combat it. Um, also, everybody wants to, to work with less but wants more out of the police department always. So working with less, producing more camera system is, is, is a good way to do that. And over the past year, I've been working on a grant with, with Adams County and Natchez PD, the Project NOLA grant. And you should be seeing cameras popping up throughout Vidalia uh, within the next couple of months. And um, it, it, I can tell you a lot more about it at a later date, but uh, that, that's happening and it's gonna happen and it's gonna be a great thing for our community. Uh, so with that being said, I, I, I think uh, everything's on the right track. Thank you. Next question is, Police departments around the country are finding it more and more difficult to attract qualified applicants. Discuss your management philosophy and techniques relating to recruitment and retention of law enforcement personnel. And Chris, we'll start with you. Well, there are a lot of things to help retain officers. One thing would be specialized training in areas that they're most passionate about. Secondly, would be boosting morale. Uh, mentor, motivate, encourage, listen to ideas that are shared back and forth between officers, not shutting all ideas out and actually accepting ideas. Uh, the women in law enforcement put their life on the line for us every day. Um, these actions alone will boost morale. And if you don't ask, if you don't know, ask. If you do, if you do know, teach. That's one of my motives. That's one of my mo mottos. Uh, we will listen and establish two-way feedback to gain insight from their experiences because I haven't ever experienced it all and no one officer will, um, per se, school resource officers. I've, I'm not a school resource officer. I've never been trained in that area. Uh, my own training and experience has prepared me to take on this role. So, however, learning to better the department, the officers and myself should never cease. Thank you. Next will be Arthur Lewis. My management philosophy and techniques regarding the recruitment and retention of law enforcement personnel is to interview and hire officers, men and women, to have pride, integrity, honesty, and respect for the badge. My objectives are, number one, to work with the mayor and the town council to increase base pay to attract the best of the best. Number two, to have post-certified officers to continue their education through law enforcement conferences and workshops. And number three, to have non-certified personnel to attend conference and workshop to enhance their knowledge. We will continue our planned development in, our first, in my first um, administration. I am not a one-man show. I, I am a leader that surrounds myself with capable, capable and qualified people that can make things happen for your department and for your community. I believe officers perform up to the standards that they see their chief upholding and standards that the community expects of them. I believe in doing the right thing for all people. I never believe in hiring family or friends. I hired the people that could do the job. I hired honestly. I did what it was, was I was supposed to do. You see, in law enforcement, you're not gonna make friends and you can't, and you can't um, overlook or let your family get away with things that, the law is for everybody. No one is above the law. 
and as I was about to state earlier, being a police chief is something like being a parent. When you are a respectable parent, you have respectable children. And when you have a disrespectable parent, you have disrespectable children. And this law enforcement is all about the community, not friends, family, or whatsoever. Thank you, Arthur. Next is Chief Joey Merrill. I can't answer this question without bragging on my department first. We got the cream of the crop right here in Vidalia. We got the best of the best. And that comes from having the money to pay them. We got other agencies all around, and we got first shot. We got first choice. And because of that, we got a board, we got uh, a mayor that, that, you know, gives us the money to do that and provides the proper training to keep them trained. And you got to have that good equipment. We got, I mean, you don't have to look far at other people's equipment. We got the best. And we don't have no problem with too many people leaving. So, um, I mean, that's, that's how you keep good people. Pay them good, train them good, and keep the morale up, and that's what we have. We have, we have a safe town, and that's because of the, the, the department we have. Thank you, Chief. Our last question, and we'll start with uh, Chief Merrill. If elected, what will your budget look like in terms of spending, anticipated revenues, employee training, and other sections? Well, uh, the budget is something I'm proud of. Um, my first year in office, I cut it $750,000 approximately. Um, that was just the first year, and I've continued that since then. So I cut out all the ridiculous spending. Um, that's one way that we was able to cut it. The, uh, we attrition personnel, and when I say attrition personnel, I, I mean in the office. I didn't take anybody off the street. We still have the same number of qualified officers on the street. Um, I got rid of office person. I didn't get rid of them, I attritioned them. So when, when you get handed a table, it takes a little time to fix it. So. Is it fixed all the way? No, but, but we're working on it, and I'm proud, to, I'm proud of what we've done with the budget in our department. And uh, if you add the three years up that we've been in office, we've pretty much had a whole budget, uh, a whole year's worth of budget for free with, with the $750,000 we've saved per year. Thank you. Next would be Arthur Lewis. You see, Vidalia is blessed. We are unlike any other town in this area. We do not depend on police writing tickets to bring in revenue. Our budget request is submitted to the town council or the city council each year and is approved upon the base of revenues generated by other means. For us, as a business, personnel costs salaries, benefits, education, et cetera, accounted for over 75% of our budget request. Again, we will continue what we began in my first administration. We will have a budget committee that will study all aspects of the department in terms of cost and analysis. We will work to we will work with the councilman, uh, alderman that assigned to the department and the city council budget committee on what the department needs and justification of those needs. Those needs will change yearly as equipment ages and as spending, as standards change and as costs change. We will continue the standards of no unnecessary spending any cuts that needed to be made um, 
with the result of any reduction or without reduction of service to the people. Vidalia was in a crisis when I took over the first time. We had a situation where Vidalia was on a black cloud. The mayor and all of them come to me and say, son, you know that um, you're going to run this place. You have to run it like a business and say that what would make the people and what would make this cloud leave from over Vidalia? I say money. It would make them happy. But you have to have dedicated people and you have to have a dedicated chief. Thank you. Chris? My take on it is we will proactively seek out grants to, to implement specialized unit. I come from a specialized unit and let me explain what a specialized unit can do for the community. During my time on the task force, fiscal year 2017-2018, we recovered $100,000 cash revenue from a criminal's hands that went right back into the budget. Now, specialized units that I want to implement here is putting two people back on the task force because it benefits the whole community, not just Vidalia. Uh, something else I want to do is implement an ALPR system and a criminal interdiction unit, which will take care of the speeding 18-wheelers on the highway. Uh, you have to look at the bigger picture when it comes to crime. It's not just focused here in Vidalia. There's a bigger picture across the United States, and it's way bigger than here. And if you can catch it coming through here, because that bridge is a funnel, it'll bring revenues that you've never seen back to our town. Thank you. Thank you. And that concludes the question part. Now we'll have two minutes for closing remarks. And uh, so, Chris, we'll uh, go back and start with you. And then, Arthur, you'd be next and finish it up with Chief Mayor. All right. I'm going to say it. I'm Chris Strickland, a.k.a. Batman, for those that have worked with me. Um, if you want a police chief that has practical experience in police work, one that is truly passionate and st about studying and upholding the laws and serving all others, these are just some of my credentials. If you want to see more of my credentials, they're back there on the table. My cards, my door cards, and my personal business cards are there with my personal phone number. Any questions you have after this, please don't hesitate to call me. I'll answer it to the best of my ability. I want to thank the Cham Chamber of Commerce for allowing us to speak tonight, and most of all, my personal Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. My Arthur. name is Arthur Lewis, and I'm seeking your support to become chief. I'm married to Cheryl Lewis of 31 years. We have three children, Arthur Jr., Austin, and Amber. I've been in law enforcement for over 40 years. I have the experience and the knowledge, not just here in Vidalia, and I was also a deputy sheriff, but not only here in Concordia Parish, but I was a military policeman also. I started up and I started out through the ranks, each and everywhere that I went. When in military, I started off as a gate guard, worked my way up to uh, CID, uh, Criminal Investigation Detachment. When it come to the sheriff's office in 1980, I worked my way up from um, dispatch through patrol and then became investigated with the Concordia Parish Sheriff's Office. Also with Vidalia, I went through dispatch, patrol, patrol sergeant, patrol lieutenant, patrol uh, captain, and also the assistant chief. And then I became the chief of police. It, um, my daughter, my daughter um, Amber Lewis sat back and she's very proud of her father, and I'm very protective of her. And so this is the way that I will work with the community, not just looking out for people that is going to give me anything. I, like I said earlier, I never did hire family and friend. The law is for everybody. It's for everybody. It's just like I was saying, just uh, stated earlier, we cannot, and I was not looking for friends when I went and worked in the police department. Matter of fact, I had the officers to know that once we get in that office, I can be friendly, I can do whatever, you invited to my home, and we can carry on or whatever the case may be. I didn't come into law enforcement to be friends with anyone, um, family, friends, or anyone who can give me anything. 
the law is for everybody, not just one particular person or what they can get to get around you. I hate politics. Politics is a hateful thing, but then it's necessary also. It's necessary. You see, you can't get into this business. You have to be able to be a politician for everybody. The whole country, everyone. Arthur, if you want to just finish up, we're, we're okay. Finish um, up, we're done. For ev everyone, um, the mayor used to tell me, and I hate I hate this because I don't have any problem with these candidates up here. Uh, as a matter of fact, I like them. I hired him, and he was a baby when me and his father worked together, and. Politics is just a nasty thing. It'll pit people against people. But we are all one race of people, and that's the human race. The only thing that we have to do is do the right thing. You don't pick a chief because he's your that's kid, time. a that's, friend. That's time, Arthur. Thank okay. you. That's time. Thank you. Chief Merrill. First off, I want to thank you all for having me up here. Thank you all for being here. I want to take this time to tell you that I'm running to keep Bedelia on the right track. You are my boss as a whole. Not one person, not one group. You as a whole are the ones that I work for. This is a job interview. And, and first off, I'm here. Uh, second, I have worked and shown for the last three and a half years work that you can be proud of. This is an election. You're going to hear things. You're going to, you're going to hear uh, rumors. You're going to hear false statements. Do your homework. That's right. You know, do your homework. That's right. At the end of the day, I know how to keep you safe. I know how to keep your property safe and spend your money wisely. I've shown you all that. I will con continue to use common sense, keep you and your property safe, be fair and transparent. So with that being said, I want to ask you to please vote for me on April the 4th. Let's continue to keep a safe place to live and raise our children. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give them a big hand. Thank you. All right, that concludes the uh, police chiefs. And on the final card tonight will be uh, our mayor candidates, and as the chiefs move off the stage, we'll ask the mayor candidates if they would to come forward. Thank you uh, guys for, for being here tonight and for, for your service that both of y'all have given to the city of Adelia. Let me remind you that Brian will be the timekeeper, so uh, I, don't, I don't guess he's quit. Um, so if you would, just watch him on the time, and uh, we will start with uh, the question portion, and then we'll finish up with the, with the two-minute uh, comments uh, for each of y'all. So the first question would go to uh, Mayor Kraft. What do you think are the biggest challenges for Vidalia? Describe your highest priorities to solve these issues if you're elected. One of the main priorities I feel like we've got right now is financial. We have a, we have a great future for our town. We've got to make sure that we have leaders who are good financial managers, also those who are are skilled at dealing with people and also skilled at dealing with situations that we come across every day and also making sure that we stay on task with that, that we do things right, that they're paid on time, bills are paid on time, we file all the reports we're supposed to, make sure all, everything's handled properly like it should be and it has been. One of the other things, and uh, several people spoke to that, is infrastructure issues. And I'm going to throw this out there, the effects of the Mississippi River right now is kind of it's, it's taken on new meaning to a lot of people all over town. And I will say this, I've been listening to people, and I, I visited with a, a local businessman, Tim Welch, who is a farmer. 
He has come up with a great suggestion and something we're going to start investigating immediately is looking at maybe drilling shallow water, shallow water wells around our town to alleviate the seepage water that District 1, 2, and 3 is experiencing right now. That is a, that's a novel idea. Nobody's even thought of it. Tim mentioned that to me. That's something we're going to put on the front burner to look at because the seepage water we're dealing with right now in our town is critical. And like Ms. Denby, you're right, Ms. Denby, when that river's up and we have a rain, it, it, does, it is a problem. We, we need to fix that with a lift station, additional lift station capacity, as well as at our sewer ponds. Also, we, need, we do need to update our infrastructure. It is aging. It is old. And now we've got the money put back. And we're going to start fixing those things. We have over two billion allocated right now to fix the streets and sewers as soon as the weather permits. And also the blighted properties, 14 blighted properties have disappeared over the last four years. 14. You, you know the ones on the highway. They're in your community. We have seven more that have been judgments rendered, and there's nine more that's been, been here uh, heard now to be taken down. So yes, we are addressing things we need to as far as the plight. And we also want to continue. Okay, I'm sorry. Strong economic development. <laughs> Thank you. Hiram. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I didn't realize we had two minutes on each subject matter. I was not set to that, but so be it. Uh, you know, someone asked, what is the major problem we have in Medallia, Louisiana? And my answer to that is lost population out migration. To me, this is the number one issue that faces our community today. We have over 70 houses for sale in Medallia at the present time, the most I've ever seen. It's projected in the 2020 census that today will be below 4,000 people, the lowest in over 40 years. This is going to have a rippling effect throughout our community to the extent that it affects our schools, our businesses, uh, our community in a whole, and even the loss of utility customers. Just about every facet of our society, uh, our property values are also declining. Also, I want to talk about what do we do about this? We market our community. We do the best we can marketing our businesses, marketing our industrial park, marketing our IT center, which I was instrumental in getting a grant to build that so that our students in college and high school can go there and learn businesses of their own and also encourage entrepreneurs to use the complex. It's a tremendous asset for our community to use. What's the next priority during my administration? It's to improve the conditions of the street and drainage. We passed the tax. When I was mayor in 1995, allocate money for those projects. I think personally that in the last four years, there's been very little money sent, spent on infrastructure, especially streets and drainage. We have a lot of plans that we can do that immediately come into office, take that money and start uh, compar uh, repairing our streets. We talked about drainage. Yes, it is a, a very important issue. I have a major plan that we're gonna take a pumping station, build a pumping station at the end of the Day Canal where it goes into Logan Sewell Drive that will relieve the Day's major, major drainage issue. And we can do that through a new grant program called the Louisiana Shed, uh, State Shed Program that will give you monies to finish the project like that. And that's what we're going to do. It will help us drain Vidalia and all the major, especially in the upper part of the canal and the orchard area. We're going to implement that as soon as I take office. We got a grant we can do for that. This is, we got grants for all the major projects that we had in Medallia. And they'll be on this card right here and we'll discuss them further down. Thank you, Hiram. The next question will uh, go to uh, Mayor Kraft. If elected, what three steps would you take to put our city on a firmer financial footing? We've done what was necessary. We got an office. The town was practically insolvent. $1.5 million in vendors and bills that were due as far as 12 months were past due. We have done what was necessary in the cuts and managing of our people and assets to continue the great, and continue the great services that we have in our utilities, our public service, all those things. Also handling your funds right. You haven't seen the day in the newspapers lately in the last four years because of mismanagement of finances or anything else. We've handled your money and we've done it right. Vidalia never had a budget meeting with, with department heads and supervisors ever. When I, when I got in office, I met immediately with them. They said, we've never done this before. How can you forecast and make balanced budgets without meeting with your department heads and supervisors to handle the things that you're supposed to? We established policies and procedures that were non-existent for us to go by and work by. So any future mayor will have a guideline to come in and to go by 
no matter who it is, they can do those things. And also, we do provide financial reports to our aldermen and also to our citizens if they, if they request those. That's something else that was never done at aldermen meetings. You come to meetings now, those things are given out and handled. So I will say this, that we have done the things financially to move our town into the future, and that money was gone. Infrastructure things didn't get done, but if you don't have money, you can't spend it. And now we've got it, we've got, I said earlier, over $2 million earmarked for sewer and street repair as soon as the weather permits. Thank you. Our Okay, the first week I'm in office, I will call a meeting with the department heads, and I take exceptions to something, I'm not going to get into that. And also meet with the accountant, who I hired when I first, when I left office. And to sit down and discuss everything, every expenditure, every invoice with them. We're also going to cut the budget 10%. Uh, I think it's too high, and so that's our objective to do that. I want to work with all of them, get them more involved, get their input, get the department's input. Uh, and so also we'll start a program that all city Properties either we'll either sell them or lease them to save thousands of dollars. We'll also restruct the administrative office uh, that will save thousands of dollars by doing that. We will restore check and balances at the City Hall Utility Department because of the issues that they had there. I'll also reevaluate a $7 million bond issue that was passed to buy a build a substation. We build the substation, the one we have now, for $3 million, and it was a grant. We need to take it, reevaluate that. We're putting the, the uh, cart before the horse and take that money there instead of spending it on a substation that if industries come, there are going to be grants available that will pay for that substation. We built this $3 million substation through grant programs, therefore saving the people of the day money. Just about every program in this town we receive grants on. This center right here, uh, the Riverwalk, uh, the new recreation complex, the new municipal complex. And the majority of those were done by grants. So we could take that money and put it in the uh, uh, general fund to use that money to spend elsewhere on other projects. And that's what we did. Uh, also, uh, 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 we're looking at, at uh, getting uh, fruit of loom buildings donated to the town. So what happened there on that building, it was, so, it was sold for $12 million and appraised for $17 million. And $4 million is what the town regrouped from that, and the company got the remaining $8 million to buy equipment. They also got the town insured that building for $65 million. And the reason for that was that the company was able to get $30 million in loans because it was appraised for, uh, uh, insured for uh, $65 million. So we want to see what we can do about that and collect also some monies that they're in arrears with their utilities and also uh, uh, for their uh, uh, utilities and also lease payments that they were behind on, over a million dollars. So there's other concessions, the present administration that the board did not have the opportunity to vote on pertaining to this particular project. So uh, also uh, I'd like to say that uh, uh, these funds that uh, in the last four years Today has received very few grants during my 24 years in office. We acquired $75 million in grants. We can leverage these grants as a part of initial funds uh, so we can work on other projects. So all those grants that we got and received helped us manage to be where we are today. Thank you, Harm. Next question. If Fidelia, and we'll start with you, Harm. If, if Fidelia received a $1 million grant to be used on city projects, if elected, how would you use that $1 million? Okay, uh, well, I just stated some of it, in the, and I repeat myself, in the last four years, Vidalia has received very few grants. During my 24 years in office, I said we received $75 million. We can leverage these again and buy and, and, and do other projects with. These uh, funds will be used on priorities such as economic development, infrastructure, such as streets, drainage, and improve our water plant. These projects have not been had anything done to them in the last four years. Again, I have the experience to do this and make sure that it gets done. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. All right. One of the things that I mentioned earlier is also just start maybe the hydrology studies to help alleviate the, uh, the seeping water in our town and start on that immediately. The other things, that we have is it's, a, it's going to be it's a million dollars, so it's, we're going to spend it. There's a lot of things that need to be done. We have other monies that's coming. The state has given us some state capital outlay. It's in priority. It's in priority two and priority five, as much as ten million dollars. So we're going after 
the public funds that we want to. Grants, by the way, are taxpayer money. They're not manna from heaven. It, grants are taxpayer money. I just keep that in mind. Also, we, are, we got right now in plans our water, our water plant expansion. We do have our, 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 our substation, our power substation that should have been built back in 2012. And you can, that'll be a story we'll talk about. Also, expanding our broadband. Those things that, so I spent way more than a million dollars, but there's a lot of things that we have, but we're also working very hard with our state government and also FEMA and GOSEF to fix some of those things, Ms. Demby, that you're having in District 1, 2, and others in District 3. We're working with them, met with them today, in matter of fact, had a real good meeting with them on, on finishing up the final thing to get monies from them to fix our infrastructure and things that's been needing to be done for years and years and years. Thank you. The final question, uh, and Hiram will uh, start with you. The final question, since both candidates have served previous terms, reflecting on your terms, what are some things you would change regarding to how you would manage the mayor's office and the city to improve Vidalia? First of all, I would focus more on management, more hands-on, work closely with all department heads, and improve the relationship between the mayor and all departments, as well as the police department. I also have weekly meetings with department heads to go over all projects and get their inputs and gather their ideas on how to improve the city. Have a closer relationship with our accountant so they'll always be aware of the budgetary issues. I hired her when it, again as I left office in the last three months. Also, I will meet with Alderman every week to discuss any concerns that they have. As in my past administration, we'll also have an open door policy. Thank you, Mayor Kraft. Okay, that question is my litmus test. And when I look back and see what I would do different, I wouldn't do a thing. Because right now we're sitting, we've done the work. We took over, uh, we come in with almost a new board and new leadership. And Mr. Copeland, I'm sorry, Ms. Ms. Moak did start on your term, but I'm the one that hired her because Scott McElmore called me and asked who we would get because he couldn't get somebody because the previous one was gone. And they were worried that whoever they hired wouldn't come with a lame duck mayor in there. And I, when he told me who the person was, I said, hire. Mr. McElmore called Ms. Moak after talking with me. Just wanted to clear that up for you. Also, uh, we look at that, we've provided strong leadership. We've had crisis here in our town. We've had a financial crisis when we come in. We've had a crisis of a bridge, our, our businesses that were, had commerce was kind of jammed up because we had a bridge that was closed for almost two years. Now we've got a, a good streets out there, even though that was a, a, a problem at the time. We're in a position now to take Vidalia to the next level. We've got our money straight. We're starting to work on those things that's gonna move us into the future. Our hydro royalties are going to be coming into the, the, the twilight of the, the bonus time. We need to make sure those monies are going to be spent right. And also, we have brought jobs. We did the work of getting industrial. The only industry that I can remember that came in in the previous 24 years is one, Lael, and I'll talk about that in a minute in the closing. Thank you. So now we move to the uh, final part of the program, closing remarks, and uh, at this time, I call on Hiram Copeland. Okay. The next year, uh, four years, will be very crucial to the future of Adalia. We faced many of the same issues when I first got elected in 1992 as we do today. With your help, we can turn around the city of Adalia, the town of Adalia. It used to be the envy of the state. We had many crises during my 24 years in office, including the great flood of 2011, uh, we, and we won the battle, saving hundreds of jobs and millions of dollars in buildings. The first day I take office, I will hit the ground running. We will make the town of a day again the envy of the state. We have set a high bar for the office of the mayor. I will assure you, with my experience and dedication, we will move the day forward. I ask that you compare my platform, and I ask that you look at this and compare my platform with uh, uh, the, uh, my opponent. And again, thank you very much. I appreciate everybody being here tonight. And uh, I ask again that you look at my accomplishment in office and look at our vision 2020, what our plans are and what we're going to do. So I ask for your help and support. Thank you very much. Mayor Kraft. Okay, four years ago, the day was broke. We owed a one and a half million dollars in bills. And we had the hydro reserve was nearly depleted. Financials were a complete mess. 
We had a business called Layel out there that the town guaranteed two of their notes, community development grant and their, their, uh, their loan that they had to the DEQ. They started in 2015 being delinquent. The town started making their payments and the town was obligated to pay back. And by the time we got through paying back, most of that was during my administration, 940,000. All that time when they started, the mayor was letting them operate and letting them keep their profits while you, the citizens of a day, made those payments. I'm not okay with that. Also, leap of number one, you own 10.3% of a $140 million, uh, $120 million, excuse me, electric plant in Morgan City. To date, this started in 2016 when I got in office. To date, you, industry, business, individuals, $4 million have gone to pay that note and the operation of that, and you receive no benefit. Mr. Copeland, when that was hope was, was hatched down at LEPA, he was the president and leader on the LEPA board. I think he meant money he could never spend, and we're on a cook for that, and it's going to take, cost us millions of dollars to get out of, and we're working on getting out of that now. Also, I told you that the town was broke. Think back four years. This man was going to the bond commission, going to shove down your throat, a $7 million purchase of land that he was part owner in with the town uh, engineer and it, also other employees of the town. Are you okay with that? You were broke and you was going to obligate us, if you could have pulled it off, you was going to obligate us to a $7 million debt. Don't think he's got a new vision. Not been here in 24 years. We are going to keep the course. We're going to keep the progress of a day going like it is. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Chamber. Thank you. That um, all I got to say is not all that, that's true. That concludes our program tonight. I want to thank all the candidates who were here. I want to thank you, the citizens, for coming out. And this concludes our program. Bye.